Howdy, y'all. Good morning. We slept so good. Mm-hmm. And for a special reason. When we last left y'all, we told y'all that y'all wouldn't believe what we found in Texas. Well. We've been looking for it and we found it. We found it and here it is. And if y'all haven't figured it out yet. We finally found just first primitive camping in Texas. Of course we are in East Texas. And this is the Angelina National Forest. Pulled in here, of course in the dark. You saw that in the last video. And it's just so peaceful. We can hear a little bit of traffic, but I think that's the best sleep we've had in a while. I, there is something about being out in the just Desolate wilderness. Well, I wouldn't say desolate because we nah, can hear the interstate. So peaceful. For it's really the soul. nice. I think that we needed that. We needed. Oh. We needed to go camping. Is what we needed to do. <laughs> oh man. And so, this place is beautiful so yeah, far. It I mean, really is. We're not around a beautiful creek or anything like that in Arkansas. We did some research. There are clear running creeks around here we just need to find them so maybe we'll get out and explore a little bit don't be worried we're not going to leave our trailer here we're going to mm. take it with us it might not be today and we might go tomorrow and explore we drove all day yesterday so we kind of want to take this day to chill out relax <sighs> it's yeah, just so houston, nice houston traffic oh my gosh that was insane and we didn't just take the interstate because we stopped to get something to eat and he drove like our all our rig downtown yeah houston <laughs> It was, and during it was a, during rush hour, yeah, it was like 5.30, and then when we left after we ate, it was like 6.30. Crazy. Oh, man. I've, I've never experienced traffic quite like that. I mean, there was people. Mm. Well, you know there's like five lanes of traffic. People will merge on, and then they'll cut over three lanes in front of everybody and make diesel trucks slam on their brakes, and it's just it's something else. So. But I am, I am so happy. I am so at peace right now. I love it dispersed camping if you can't tell this is actually why we chose this lifestyle to begin with yeah. was to come to places like this yep. not to spend our whole lives in campgrounds but and that's the only way that we can enjoy that part of texas and hill country there is no free camping anywhere and you when that's all you've done i mean that's how i started camping i did i never once started camping in a campground like he took me out like this middle of nowhere so you just miss it you really do. You miss it. Mm. You miss digging a hole. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I told my mom that she started laughing. I was like, no, for real. Like, I don't know. That's why we do it. That's why we live this way. There are a few places in Texas that we found out that you can disperse camp. But they're all out east. Well, they're here. Yeah. All out in these national forests. Did you tell them we're in the Angelina? Yeah. yeah. Disperse camp on the islands of Padre and South Padre. Besides that, everything is state parks or private campgrounds. Until you get out to Big Ben, which is still, well, Big Ben is just Big Ben. It's a country all its own. To celebrate the finding of our first camping spot, we busted out some cookies that Kelly got the other day with M&Ms in them. Pretty good. Man, I'm as happy as two peas in a pod. You can just tell our spirits are just so much better right now. Both of us. It's just... It's amazing what it would do to you. It's just, we're not even near a creek. Could you imagine if we were near a creek? We just found a dead end road on a forest road. And we said, there's home. There it is. There it Big is. Big open area, no grass. I'm sure people are gonna ask, what do we use? Cause I think I've seen a comment. So to find anything, even campgrounds, we have several apps that we use. Definitely Google Maps, that's my first go-to. Always go to Google Maps, type in whatever I'm looking for. Then I also like to use either Hip Camp. What do you like to use, Cody? How do you find like property that is not private property? Because there is private property inside the National Forest, but there's an app to let you know if you're on the right property. And what is that? Uh, it's called Onyx Off-Road. 
We pay an annual fee of thirty bucks, I think, and we just we just purchased it uh, last mm -hmm. May or when June we when we time. went full time. But if I can show y'all an example, and I don't know if y'all be able to see it, and if you can see, it shows national forest roads that we're on, and anything that's green like this is public land. Anything within it, like for this example, that is private property. Get me another cookie before Kelly cooks what she's gonna cook. Angel Princess, what are you cooking this morning? I'm cooking, once again, the breakfast pizza. Cody said that's his new favorite, so we're gonna make it again. It's pretty darn good. It's, it's beyond good. It's phenomenal. It's really weird to be around a bunch of tall trees again. I feel like I haven't seen them in months. No, I haven't seen tall trees in months. And that's one of Kelly's and my favorite views is whenever you can see that green in the pine in winter. It just, it really shines during the winter. It's so pretty. Yeah, I love that against the blue sky. You need a blue sky. So Kelly will make a little hole right here in the center of the pizza to crack an egg. Well, so this is my pizza because well, yeah. she says she doesn't like runny eggs. And bacon, dog! I gotta fry some bacon, dude. I knew you were forgetting something there. Kelly had the wrong pan out for bacon too. You are you are so excited that you don't even know how to handle yourself. Bacon is done. I almost forgot about that. I cannot believe that. That would have been bad. That would have been bad. It would have been bad, but I would have just been unhappy about it. Which is bad. If Kelly's not happy, that's bad. I don't know any other way around that. And then I need to crumble the bacon. This is just how I do it. I don't know how y'all do it. Not good bacon. H E B brand bacon. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So now we're just gonna bake it until the white around the egg is set. That right there is what dreams are made of. I'm in heaven right now, if y'all can't tell. And look how crazy this little baby pine tree is. I just noticed this thing. It looks like a baby palm tree. different your hair is so gorgeous <laughs> while we're waiting on Cody's pizza I'm gonna go ahead and make my eggs so I'm just gonna make a fried egg here Oopsie. I mean do that Cody's is done Ooh, I can't do it. so this is what I'm using just very regular on bread. Okay. Now Kelly's won't cook as long because she already cooked her egg. So. Right, I'm just basically melting the cheese and heating up the egg at this point. How was it, babe? That was great. Yeah, there ain't nothing like a hole in the woods. I'll tell you what. Now I gotta wash these dishes, which I've already pre-wiped with the baby wipes, just so we don't waste any water. So what I'm gonna do is just soap everything up and once everything is soaked up and wiped out, then we'll just rinse it off with the blue jug water. 
So we're saving our water in the trailer so we can have a shower later. And dinner is usually a little more dirty, hard to clean up. Well, depending on what I cook. I'm not sure what I'm gonna cook yet. So we might use that water for dinner dishes. I don't know yet though. Now normally, if we were in bear country or something with a lot of big predators, like scary animals, we would do this away from camp, but I mean, coyotes are the biggest threat we have here. So we're not too worried about doing this by camp. Well, all the food has already been wiped out and in the trash. Yeah. So this is just water and soap. That is a big key, Kelly using the wet wipes earlier to pull the food off and throwing it in the trash. And then we'll store the trash in the trailer overnight. And then when we get ready to leave camp, instead of having to figure out where to put nasty trash in the trailer, that little backpack that y'all have seen on the back of the H3 on the spare tire, that's actually a trash bag. And we'll store the trash in there until we find a place to dispose of it. And if you're wondering, the type of soap Kelly uses is the seventh generation plant-based biodegradable soap. This stuff is pretty darn nice. We don't want to use that kind of soap for our body, so we've always used this Dr. Bronner's. This stuff is solid. And make sure you get the unfragrant scented one that has no fragrance, so it's unscented. Because if it's summer and you have lavender on, you're definitely going to be attracting bees and horse flies. If you have the unfragranted one, you're less likely to have bees and horse flies wanting to land on you. And if you've ever seen Kelly be afraid of something, let a big old horse fly be flying around her. She does not like horse flies. I hate horse flies. My gosh, they're so annoying. We decided to take a little walk. There's a bunch of different little spurs they kind of go off. We don't know where they go. Game trails. Game trails. I don't know. Human trails, maybe. Took one of these earlier to go to the bathroom. There's several. Which one are we doing? We're doing the, uh, the bathroom trail. The poop trail. So we found out that this is a different pine. We have phone service here and we can do research. And this is a long leaf pine. Look how long that needle is. Yeah, like, I've never seen anything like it. In Arkansas, we have short leaf pines that are not this long or loblolly. We've seen these in Mississippi, southern Louisiana, and now southeast Texas. And the baby bark looks like some kind of prehistoric fossil. This is something that we would see in the Washita or in the Ozarks in the limestone up there, say the Buffalo River or Richland Creek area, where you would see fossils that had this design in it. And it, it looked like dragon scales. Yeah, I was about to say, to me, it looks like a lizard scale or something. I mean, look how thick it grows up to the top. This is so interesting. It's really pretty. It's a gorgeous tree. I love it because it looks like a palm tree. All right, so we're off. And I guess we're going to look for firewood, too. I guess on the way back, I see some right now. Because we get to have a fire. We haven't had a fire in so long. So long. So whenever we're hiking, Y'all always ask, how often do y'all have to set up the camera to get a shot? Well, we thought since we don't know what's on this trail and it's short, we would show you what I have to go through to actually get some of the shots. And I'll look and I'll find something kind of cool like another one of these trees, long leaf pines, and get our little old cell phone, which we use an iPhone 13. We'll set it up and we'll see what we need to get for a cool shot. I don't like the way that looks. And Kelly has to put up with me doing this all the time. That looks like a little bit better of an angle. Uh, let's see how this looks. And then we'll take a few steps back. Get from this gorgeous tree. And honey, after you. We do that about a couple hundred times. And then we have good shots of the trail. I think this used to be an old road. Not only that, it does look like they have done a controlled burn here, but it looks like it's been a long time ago. You can tell because the trees, they all have this black 
hint to them. Man, look how gorgeous all that green is right there. Yeah, That's the color we're talking about that we love. Yeah. Wow. Listen. You can hear the wind oh, love that. whistling through the pines. We want to rephrase it's not wind, that's a breeze. We used to call that a wind. It might be wind if we didn't have the trees blocking us. True that, true that. And you know, we're used to those loblolly pines or shortleaf pines in Arkansas that, I mean, these pine cones are about half the, are about double the size of the ones that we're used to seeing. Look how big that is. I mean, that's a big pine cone. Look how big that is, babe. It's pretty big. I mean, that's a big pine cone. that are new probably have only been seeing us in Texas camping at campgrounds and using the showers at the campgrounds but this is the shower that we've been missing the shower take a shower in tell them how much you love the shower Kim. what we're setting up is the Jolka brand two-room shower tent we also have the pump system where we can pump water from a creek and shower or we have of course a pump in our trailer that connects to the Jolka shower system with a shower head and we can use the shower from our trailer to take a shower. So we only have 30 gallons of water so how we're going to take a shower is one person's going to stand at the pump and turn it on and off. The reason we won't use the shower head to turn it on and off is because the pressure might break the little plastic pieces. It's all plastic. So just to ensure that we keep that in good shape and it doesn't break, someone will stand over here at the pump and we'll turn this little switch on and off to gauge the water. Now it will get hot because it does have a heater 
that comes with it. So it's kind of like a tankless hot portable hot water heater. But of course, you know, once you turn it on and off like that, you're not going to get completely hot water every time you turn it on, it takes a second to heat up. But it still works. We still get a good shower. We don't miss a shower. We get one every day, regardless if it's with this or in a campground or we have pilot gas stations. If you've never tried that before and you live on the road, definitely do that. I just feel like there's no reason to not get a good shower. Even if you have a water tank, there's still ways around that you can get a shower. I mean, that's what I was afraid of whenever we went on this journey is I was like, I have to have a shower every day. Lo and behold, Joko was like, hey, try this out. And we love it. So right now we got the shower tent set up. This is what it looks like. I'm going to use the larger stakes because the smaller stakes that come with it are the normal tent stakes. And we actually have a vlog on how to set this up. We'll put it in the description below. And someone asked us if we could show how to break it down. Well, we'll leave this up overnight so it will dry. And tomorrow we'll show you how this breaks down. But these stakes are great, but this ground is so hard that I'm going to use these massive stakes to be able to keep it in place. And one thing I did want to clarify on the shower head is the pump that it comes with, the pressure... I forgot what the PSI was in that. I think it's but... only 30 PSI. What comes with it, the pump is 30 PSI. This is 55 PSI. So when you, I did research on the unit, uh, you are not to exceed anything over 60 PSI through the hot water heater. But we just don't want to break anything. We want to use it as long as possible. It's been great. We have had no issues with it, nothing breaking. And I think it's just because we take care of it. We're, we're easy with things and we just want to get the longevity of it. You won't see us be real rough throwing stuff around. If it takes an extra 10 to 15 minutes to put stuff up without breaking it, we'll take the time not to do it or to do that just so we don't have to spend more money down the road because that saves us money. Exactly. So what I like to do is I like to take a towel. This will be the dry area. Once we're done showering, you have a towel to step on so your feet dry and water doesn't puddle up in the center here. And if you're wondering where your water goes, it goes around the bottom here. There's mesh on the side. The center is all tarp. So we got this double double room shower so that you're not standing in a wet area and you actually have an area to dry off. And it's nice to have a spot that wind's not going to be blowing on you when you're trying to dry off. Yeah, it's a lot warmer in here than it is out there right now. So this is the Joka hot water system. This is actually the sink and everything sets inside the sink for when you want to do dishes. These are the two hoses that we'll use for the shower head. Our hoses, we'll need that hose. We'll need the propane line. We won't need those hoses. The actual tankless hot water heater, the shower head, the sink faucet. This little thing here is actually the filter that goes into the river so that you don't get sludge and stuff if you're if you have a waterway that you want to pump water out of. The stand. And then of course you get the good old pump itself and the cage to put that filter in so that it doesn't sit on the bottom of the water. But we don't need that tonight either since we're using the trailer. So to get the shower set up and extend this, pop this right here. And this is the part that we were talking about that can't handle high pressure. It handles the pump pressure fine, but it might not handle that tank pressure. Hang it over your head. Bam. Up here, up there, up there, up there. These hooks are on both sides, so if the water heater is on this side, you have these hooks too to run out the bottom as well. But with it being on that side, you just run it down this side of the shower tank. Pop her on out the bottom. I got it. This little adapter in there, you pop that in there so that you can take this female in and put it on that male adapter. And I'm going to turn this so I can actually see and keep an eye on the water temperature for Kelly. Because Kelly likes it 103 whenever it's not cold out and she likes it like 108 whenever it's cold. I do? I thought I just liked 103. Oh yeah. I like both. Gas line. The reason we have two giant balls of propane so that we can always have enough for a water heater. Up. Yeah. Cooking, water heater, and heater in the tent. We use the heck out of these things. How long do they last us, babe? Well, if we're not running it for the heater in the tent, last a long time longer than a month so this is the homemade adapter i made i bought this little piece at home depot and i bought this short hose at home depot so i can screw it on with the tr this hose that came with the trailer i'll just do that 
plug that in right there to the trailer. Like that. So on the front, we're gonna go max flow here and max temperature of heat because we want this thing to heat up quick. And this is the reason we got one of these trailers is so we can have that 30 gallon water tank when we camp at places like this with no water. We got plenty of fresh water. We've got three lights of battery and here, you ready? We go. There she goes. Keep it on. Keep it on, she's on. Yeah, it's at 70, 80, 98, 99, 100, 101. Okay, got up to 102. So I can tell from the screen, looking at the GoPro, seeing what you are seeing, it looks like that little thermostat is flashing, but really it's a solid light. It's actually consistent light. It doesn't flash. Turning off. Okay. What's the temp? It is a uh, hundred and something. Hundred and two. Right, turning, off. turning off. The other important thing to do with showering like this is make sure when it's chilly out, like it's about to be. Shower before the sun goes down. Okay. Now, if you have endless hot water, you can shower whenever. But whenever you have someone over here turning off and on the pump, it can get pretty cold in there pretty quick. Even with the walls blocking the wind. Last rinse. Okay. How was it, Angel Princess? It was good. Oh, close that. Closing. Cold, cold, breathing. She goes in smelling like a foot. She comes out but, smelling like... Actually, Kelly never yeah, smells not bad. not smell like a foot. I smell bad all the time. And we just did a workout and I'm pretty rank right now. She does a workout, she smells fine. I smell like <sighs> caramelized onions. Sometimes my armpits smell bad. Sometimes, did you hear that? Sometimes they smell bad. Is this your final rinse? Yeah. So what Cody does differently, is I've only turned the pump on one time for him to get wet and then I turned it off and I just turned it on again because he soaked everything up apparently and now he's rinsing off. So he has his way of doing it. I have my way of doing it. I work in sections. I have a lot of hair. But so far I just checked and the tank still says full on fresh water. So that's good. But yeah, I've calculated with 30 gallons we can get four showers like this and two dishwashing cleanups. So I think that's pretty good. At that point we would just and leave and fill the tank up somewhere. Find another spot to camp. So at least that way we get to switch camping sections. Oh, I gotta kill it. If we are in a remote area, I usually try to look for places to fill up fresh water. iOverlander is a good app to use for that. Sometimes you can just go to a business and you can say, hey, can we fill up our tank with your water? And we've always gotten a yes. We've never gotten turned down for that. People are pretty nice. Other than that, campgrounds you can fill up. If, say if you're camping in a campground for a while, you get ready to leave, fill it up, and you can good to go. So Cody's done now. He's just drying off. I gotta see what time it is and figure out about dinner. I'm not even hungry. Are you hungry yet? No. You're not hungry yet? I'm not really that hungry. We had a really late breakfast. What did we eat at like 11.30? <laughs> But, man, tell them, I mean, it's, we really slept better than we've slept in a long, long, long time. Yeah. Really it was long great. time. Like, it we was, slept hard. It was really great. Let Cody get dressed and we'll, I don't know what we'll do. We'll see you in a bit. So we figured out what we were going to do. Start a fire. Yeah. Oh, I'm hi, so, welcome oh, to crap. All Tech Landing. excuse her. I'm so excited to have a campfire. I was just trying to find wood for the fire and I was like, this just gives me something to do. And I, I won't go to bed early. And I can have a way to get my hands warm when they get cold. And I feel the heat from right here. I had to do what well, Kelly, you know, she's a pyro. She's like a dog in the forest. I've said this before to y'all. She just drags up sticks. It's she so gets so fun. excited. It's so much fun. But she needs lighting. So if you can see, got the Lucy lights set up. And she needed a light over her table because we didn't want to put out the bat wing awning. We wanted the full grandeur of 
just the beautiful sky here. So we had no trees nearby and I had nothing to go over her table because she wanted her table right here because it's level. So I did a little ingenuity. I did a trucker's hitch up here. Check that out. Pretty nice, isn't it? Did a trucker's hitch there and tied a basic knot way, way over there. And she was always asking Cody, why do you have such long cordage for moments like these? Because I knew one day I would need this much cordage and here the day has arrived. I think one of them's a hundred foot and the other one's like 50 foot. To be able to get it over the, uh, get it up high enough because out here you've dropped actually some in elevation. Not much, just a couple feet, but it's enough to cause the light to be right in your face. So I had to go way up here and I did a little jump rope thing to get it up there. Came down here, tied a basic knot, nothing fancy or a slip knot. And it ends up being right over her head, perfect spot. Oh yeah. When it gets dark here in a little bit, it's gonna be real nice. Real nice. It is time to cook dinner. And we haven't had this in a while, so October stew it is.
Might not be the most pretty Danish ever, but it's delicious. Very, very delicious. Good job, babe. You know I gotta flip it so it doesn't burn. So that's why it doesn't look very pretty. Still good. Just the bottom. It's not bad, I've seen it a lot worse. National Forest. I haven't done this in a while. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Another note I want to add is when I take National Forest roads, I do not put the sway bar on because it, the trailer wants to stay as straight behind a vehicle as possible. Well, if you're sliding on some soft uh, surfaces, say gravel, sand, that trailer is going to keep wanting to push the trailer or the front vehicle through that. If you want to go through it slowly, it's easier just not to have this on there because it allows it to articulate. It's usually just for highway yeah. traveling. So high All speeds, right. you know. Let's see what we can find. We are coming up to the first flag that I found last night so last night I was using those maps onyx off-road that we told you about and I looked on rivers waterways roads that were open and I put flags on Google Maps little stars and that's where we're heading right now and this first one looks like a bust I think this is it this is it this looks like a dump yeah like that's a bathtub <laughs> What we were trying to hit was this creek called Clear Creek. And I'm kind of curious to see if we're even close to it. This keeps getting thicker and thicker. This spot's a bust. 
So this is what we go through to find all those spots in Arkansas and other places. We just drive around all the spots that we found and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. This is bad. We'll uh, head on to the next destination. Coming up on our next star on the map, and it is uh, not a creek, it is a blue pond. It looked really clean on the map, so we thought we'd come check it out in person, but I figure this is like a recreational area. Yeah, it's Doesn't it look, look like, like it? One, I'm saying that because of this this little sign here. This little kiosk is pick up your own trash. There's nothing on it, but at least we can drive around and see. It looks, I see a fire right there, an old fire. Fire, no fire. So let's check it out. I like this little spot here. It's kind of back in the corner. Let's see what this water looks like. There's some people across the way as well. I don't know if they camped or fishing or what. I wonder if this is a spring fed pond or some kind of quarry or what happened here because it's really clean. I say keep it on the map. I'm digging this spot. It's pretty nice. So we decided to come to the other side of the pond and these people that were over here look like they camped here so we wanted to come and check this spot out. It's kind of up a little bit in the trees and Cody wanted to cast a line over here. This is cool. This is cool. Ooh, look and you can just walk down. This looks cool. Nice. I'm only going to do two casts. That's it. That's all I got time for. That's it. That's all I got time so this is the spot if you want to get the view and then the water's here. It's really blue. It is. I'm shocked. Man, this is what I miss doing. I know, right? I love just going exploring. This is so cool. I like this. This is a cool spot. Let's keep this on the map. Oh, wow. Yeah, this would be... Wow. Ooh, don't hit me. Did I say two? Mm-hmm. That's all I have to for is two? Yep, we gotta go see other places. Get one more, just one more. <laughs> Let me go over here. There's even uh, cypress trees right there. Interesting, sure is. Well, I yeah. just saw this big body of water and I just wanted to at least get a line with it. Or this like probably what, new, no? Yeah, something like that. But we're still in the Angelina National Forest in East Texas, in the piney woods. As you can tell, nothing but pine trees. Let's see, is it windy up here? No, not windy up here. Cool camp spot though. I like it. Okay, on to the next. So we have made it to our first water crossing. Wow, and the water is clear and it just, it looks like the beach because there's sand at the bottom and the sand's pretty white. So it looks like the water is brown, but it's not. It's really clear. Pretty cool. It is really pretty. It is in its own beauty. So we're just trying to see if there's any way to camp over here, but it looks like this is actually parking for a trailhead to this abandoned sawmill that we saw. On so Google Maps. yeah, on Google Maps. I don't know if it gets like, you know, really popular or if this is just a parking area. I don't know. I don't see where you could camp anywhere. Either. I don't either. And I wonder the thing what we're starting going. to realize is when you get really close to waterways, it's really sandy, maybe 50 yards on either side. Yeah. It's not rocky at all. But do you want to keep going on this road or what? Uh, Let's see where it goes yeah. on the map. Let me see. Because it's not even on the map. Oh. Uh, That's what's crazy. Huh. It's a pretty smooth road, too. Yeah. It uh, well, looks like it looks we're about different to... different up here. Does it? I was about to say, it looks like we're about to pop out somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's starting to look a little, uh... Sketch? Yeah. Because it looks like... You said pop out somewhere. I don't know where you're talking about. Yeah, it's an ATV trail. Turns out, it's turning into an ATV off-road side-by-side trail that goes uphill and it looks pretty muddy. Yeah. So we're going to turn around and do we have another spot we're checking? Yeah, we got it. Okay, yeah, we're going to turn around. We're going to check the next spot. We did 
did find an established campground. It's called Boinkin Springs Campground. It looks like it's $10 a day. There's camping. I don't see any water at the campsite, so um, it looks like it's dry camping. But there, it is a campground, and it doesn't look very packed either. So we found that. Boinkin Springs looks pretty cool. Huh. So we're still doing research right now. This was a star, this spot, which ends up just being a spot, a wide well, spot in the road. Wide spot, and then the road keeps going. That was a bus. That that was a weird bust because I thought that was actually by well, a creek. This could be something. It could. See the creek is over here. Yeah, I mean it's still gorgeous. Look at that, y'all. Just off in the distance, just beautiful hills of grass. You can tell they do a lot of controlled burns out here because. If they don't do control burn, it doesn't look like that. Matter of fact, if we find another area that hadn't been control burned, we'll uh, give you an example of that. But that was a weird bus because it wasn't a dead end. It wasn't a spot. It wasn't nothing. And there was a road that continued, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, we're starting to get some real soft sand and we're not feeling doing crazy crazy today this trail oh that's the aftermarket fans if you're new to the channel we had a custom radiator installed uh to handle you know tow towing the trailer and those uh electric fans on that thing sounds really loud but it works like a beast but with everything closing in really tight i don't know if we want to continue going down this forest road mainly because we're pulling the trailer and i mean i could back up here and turn around if i wanted to but i wanted to show you all a great example of if it if there wasn't a control burn so that con control burn everything's open it allows for grasses to grow more vegetation for deer and other wildlife to eat and then this is non-control burned this is what it looks like when they have not had a control burn it gets really thick where you can't even see through it. And then you can see through it. It's really pretty, isn't it? Actually, I'm starting to get glad we made the call not to continue down. There's a tree across the road and I don't have a chainsaw or anything to tow it out of the way. Tree down. Huh, well, another dead end. We're probably maybe four and a half hours into driving around, scouting for stuff. And so far, I think where we left camp this morning is still our favorite spot. I gotta help Cody back up out of here. You got it, can you come on? There's some sand in the way.